Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. It's so good to see you. I'm Jenna Eubank with Simple Stories, and welcome to Simple Stories Live. I hope that you've had a fantastic week and that you're heading into a really fun weekend. We've got Valentine's Day here in the U.S. on Monday, Galentine's Day on Sunday. So I don't know, maybe you're doing some Valentine crafting. Maybe you're making some gifts. Maybe you're making a Valentine box, some treat boxes. I don't know. Maybe you're headed out to have some dinner. Maybe you're making some Valentine cards. Speaking of cards, we have a really fun card organization project for you today. And this is something that has been on my mind for many years and um, is something that I've wanted to make. It's something that every new year I go, well, gosh, I have all these handmade cards, but I'm really terrible at sending them out. And so I just think I've got to come up with an idea of a way to organize them better. Now, I know we all have our boxes of cards that we've made, right? But this project today is meant to go a little bit deeper. It's supposed to help you organize yourself a, in a little bit more detailed way. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Today, we're going to be working with the Simple Stories Get, uh, Good Stuff collection. I'll give you a flip through of that really quick. But first, I want to apologize for my voice. I've been up since 3 a.m. You know how you have those craft ideas in the middle of the night and you're like, I got to go make something. So that's what I've been doing today. So I think I'm not feeling sick or anything. I think my voice is just getting tired because I've been up for a long time, but I've been having fun. So I'm, I'm not worried about it. Anyway, I want to apologize for my squeakiness and I'll be taking some drinks here and there to hopefully um, combat that. But anyway, well, welcome to our Simple Stories Live. We are going live every Friday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, so I hope you'll put it in your schedule and that you'll plan on joining us each Friday. Okay, let's dive in. I want to show you this project because it's I'm really excited to get going on it. So we are going to be using the Good Stuff Collection. You know what? Let me take a drink real quick. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll say hello to a few people. I see Becky out there. I see Elsie. Hello. I see Doramar. Hello. It's so great to see you. I see um, Terry. It's great to see you. Now, if you want me to see your name through the app that I'm using, you can click the link right above this video, and then there will be a blue bar that you'll need to click again. That just shows, um, that just gives StreamYard permission for me to see your face and your name as we're on our live today. It doesn't gather any other information. It just shows me your um, profile and your name that you've already set up on Facebook. So that way I can shout out and say hi to you. So we are going to be using the Good Stuff Collection, like I mentioned before, and this is a collection. Every year, Simple Stories designs a yearly collection where we have these yearly cut-apart cards that feature each month of the year, and this is our collection for this year. It's so cute. I love the bright pink. I love the muted blues. It's got the orange, the yellow, the greens, some craft color. It's just a gorgeous collection. Now, these cut-apart cards are on one side of the paper, and then you have a beautiful coordinating pattern on the other side, and this makes this type of a collection really useful for a lot of things. It's great for um, month and review layouts. It's great for planner type projects. It's great for organizational projects like we're going to be doing today. So there's just a little quick peek at a few of the papers, but let me show you our project. So for our project, we're going to be using the 6x8 Snap Designer Binder. Now, Simple Stories has many um, 6x8 binders. Well, we have this designer binder that comes in several different colors. It's a printed, heavy coated stock. It's got like a glossy stock. There's the metal corners right here. You got this beautiful um, book plate here on the end, and it's a one and a half inch D ring on the inside. Now, when you purchase this binder, it doesn't come with page pockets, and this is different from our normal ones. Our normal chipboard dividers or binders actually come with pages and dividers and page pockets. They fit the exact same page pockets that go in this. So um, I just want you to know that this does not come with anything in it. And the reason for that is that this was meant as a storage binder when this was originally developed. Look how cute the polka dots are inside. So um, that's the reason it doesn't come with page pockets. So if you want to use page pockets in a project with one of these binders, be sure to pick those up when you purchase that. But for today's project, we're not using page pockets. We're actually going to make our own pockets out of our beautiful color vibe cardstock. Now, what I have done with this project, the idea for this project, is that you have a pocket for each month of the year. And then down here, we have a list for each day of the month. Now, the idea behind this is that you would write in your birthdays or you would write in your anniversaries and you would tuck 
in the cards that you want to send or include with that present in the pocket. So it's a waiting for you. Now, the, the reason I love this idea is because we have tons of handmade cards, right? And But sometimes we're scrambling at the last minute to find one for that wedding or to find one for that birthday. And we want to get it out the door. And maybe we're not in the mood, you know, because we're frantic to write that card. And so I thought, how awesome would it be to have a pocket system where you could write those cards ahead of time, kind of plan out your month and tuck those in there. You know, maybe you're feeling sentimental about people and you want to write some several birthday cards to the people you love. You know, we do. We have those days we feel a little more sentimental or a little more nostalgic. And those are a great time to sit there and write a beautiful message to the people you love or the, you know, the weddings that are coming up. And so once you do that, you can put your card right inside those pockets along with the envelope. And then when the day comes, it's ready to go. It's already written or it's already designed. You know, maybe you have someone, a, a grandson who loves frogs, for example, and you want to hand make a card with frogs for that grandson. So you can plan that ahead of time and give yourself some time and space and some organization to keep it all in one spot. You can tuck this on a shelf, um, you know, where it's nearby and you can reach for it often and you're ready to go. Now, as part of this project today, I have created this list that will be a free download. I will add that link to this video description and whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook later on. So be sure to come back and download that. But let me show you what that download looks like. And while I'm grabbing it, I'm gonna have another drink because of my tired, sleepy 3 a.m. crafting voice. Tell me you've got, tell me there's days you get up at 3 a.m. and just craft. Come on now. I'm not the only one, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Hi, Andrea. Hi, um, Terry. Hi, Donna. Hello, Amber. So good to see you. Okay, so our free download that you will get are these cards that I've put on to um, two eight and a half by 11 sheets. Um, one of the pages will have a, a list for one through 31, you know, for months with 31 days. And then there's one with um, one through 30 for months with 30 days. On the second sheet, you'll have 31 and 30, but then you'll also have your February. You'll have one with 29 for those of you who have leap year birthdays. And then there's one with 28. You'll also see there's some really light gray lines on here. And the reason for that is, I don't know about you, but when I print at home on cardstock, I have to run it through a rear feed slot. And when that happens on my printer, sometimes it doesn't grab the paper exactly straight. So when I go to put it in my trimmer, it's not exactly straight. And because this is a file with lots of lines, if you cut it crooked, it's going to be really noticeable. So I put those light, light, light lines on there so that you could cut along it with scissors. Or maybe you have a trimmer that has a light and you can use those to help line it up. So um, if you do cut it out with scissors, you can just use some distressing ink to kind of hide that or just cut right inside that light gray line and you won't even see it on your project. So come back for that download if you'd like to use those cards. Okay, so let's take a look at the project. I'm so sorry about my voice, my goodness. I'm regretting this, my 3 a.m. crafting for you guys. You know, it was fun for me, but it's not fun to listen to my voice, so I apologize for that. Okay, so for each pocket, we have used a sheet of Color Vibe cardstock. We're going to, I'm going to show you how I did that today. And so um, we will do that. And then um, I'm going to show you how I cut apart the cards. So for each sheet, you're going to be cutting it down the center. And then you're going to cut off the month card to use on the front. And then save this piece on the bottom, the six by eight piece for the pattern side. And then on the other side, we're going to cut off the bottom four by six piece and use the pattern piece, the six by eight pattern piece on the back side of the envelope. Now, the envelope, this piece right here, I thought would be a fun place to write additional notes. So I've just tucked those inside of the pocket. So if you have additional notes or things that you want to note, maybe it's gift ideas, you know, maybe you um, have you know, you know the person's favorite color and you want to keep track of that in there. So there's another idea that you could use those cards for. 
but let's go ahead and make the base of our pocket. And for that, we're going to be using the Color Vibe cardstock like I mentioned. Now, I do want to show you that there's two pieces to this pocket. We're going to be creating a six by eight and a half pocket. And then I created this additional piece, which is actually a three inch by eight and a quarter piece folded in half. And then we're going to be sandwiching that inside of our pocket as we glue it together. And that just, that double strength of cardstock on that spine or that binding will just make it last longer. And then your binding or your punched holes aren't going through your envelope and interfering with you pulling those cards in and out of the pocket, okay? So are we ready? Are we ready to put this together? Okay, let's grab a sheet of our Color Vibe cardstock and I'll grab my trimmer and we'll get going. We actually might start with some um, scoring and I'll show you why. Now in this particular project, we are going to keep our barcode on the paper and we're actually gonna use that barcode as a, a tab to glue our pocket together. So don't cut that off. Hi, Nikki, good to see you. So glad you're here. Hi, Jody. Um, she's watching from British Columbia. It's good to see you. Okay, so now some trimmers, because we are going to be utilizing this, uh, this barcode strip, some trimmers aren't 12 and a half inches high when we go to cut this. So what we want to do before we cut it is just score right along that barcode. And then we can fold it in and then cut it, if that makes sense. So if you are lucky enough to have a larger trimmer, then you won't need to do this step. You can do your scoring along that barcode later. But um, just to help out those who don't have a large trimmer, we will do that right now ahead of time, and then we'll come back and do our other scoring. The reason I'm not doing both score marks now is because I'm going to be utilizing that extra piece as the spine on another pocket. So I don't want a score line going through this solid section yet, if that makes sense. Okay, so, oh good, On I see people are saying that they are 3 a.m. scrappers, or maybe they're asking each other. <laughs> Looks like Becky's asking Andrea if she's a 3 a.m. scrapper. I don't know. Sometimes we just get that itch to make something, right? We have an idea bouncing around in our head and we just got to go get it out on paper, so to speak. Okay, so now that I've folded up that branding strip, I'm going to place it in my trimmer this way so that I can cut through the branding strip. And I'm going to place it in my trimmer at eight and a half. So we make a pocket that is eight and a half inches tall. So let me get this situated at eight and a half inches. And then we will go ahead and close that and make our cut. Okay, so we have this piece that we wanna save. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll set aside the large piece now. We will be scoring this in a second, but let's go ahead and cut this down to be a spine size. Now, I didn't cut this exactly eight and a half inch, what, inches like my pocket because I knew it'd be a little tricky to line up. So I went a little bit shorter. I went eight and a quarter. And that just um, gives me a little bit of wiggle room so that I don't have to be exactly perfect and try to trim it later. Now you can do it exactly eight and a half by 11 if you want. Maybe you are more accurate than I am. <laughs> but I tend to like, I don't know, craft at 3 a.m. in the morning and I have a hard time lining stuff up, right? Okay, so after we've cut that to eight and a quarter, we're going to turn it and we're going to trim it to three inches. So eight and a quarter by three inches. And this is going to be our spine piece. Um, we are now done with our trimmer for now. So we'll set that aside, but we do wanna bring back in our scoring tool. So while I have my little spine piece sitting here, I'm going to score it in half vertically so that I can fold it to make that binding piece and I do want the double, um, the double, I don't know, layer because that will give my um, punched spine a, a little bit more strength over time because I plan on using this for several years. You know, once you've got those birthdays in, you can use it over and over and over. So I love that about this project too. Okay, so while that, um, after you have scored that down the center, you can fold it in half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to the middle and let that dry while I work on my other piece. 
So I am actually going to use a contrasting colored spine on this. So I'm going to set this black one aside for another page and I'll bring in this winter mint color. This is one of my very favorite colors that um, Simple Stories makes. It's called Winter Mint. So if you haven't seen our Color Vibe cardstock, it has a felt texture to it. And on one side is a beautiful solid and then the other side is tonal dots. So it's perfect for die cutting, perfect for layout bases, perfect for card bases. It's just something you gotta have in your stash. And the best thing about it is it matches all of the color or all of the Simple Stories um, collections perfectly. So I'm, like I mentioned before, I'm just gonna add some adhesive to this spine and I'm going to close that up and let that dry while I work on my other piece. So um, just to smooth it out, to make sure it's all flat and the glue's um, getting a nice contact, you can take a bone folder and just, you know, kind of run it along it and squish, squish it nice and flat so that it's a nice, great straight piece. And I'm getting glue everywhere, but that is just okay. We'll clean it up later. So I'm going to set this aside. And now we're going to bring back in our, um, this is our 12 and a half with that barcode strip by eight and a half high. So we're going to score this one. We already scored the barcode piece. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that now. And then we want to score this at six inches so that we have a six by eight and a half inch pocket. Now I am doing, I'm putting the solid color on the outside because my spines are all this tonal dot. If you want both of them to be the tonal dot, do that. Like that looks super cute too. So whatever floats your boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the bone folder to give that a nice sharp crease. And now I'm gonna prep this to get ready to adhere it to my spine. So we are finished with our um, scoring board and we can set that aside. Becky says her favorite color is winter mint as well. Yes, it's so pretty. Hi Jess, good to see you. Okay, so for this project, you want to use a nice sturdy glue because this is something you're gonna be using a lot. So today you could use a, um, you could use some liquid glue. Today I'm going to be using just some really strong tape adhesive. Now, if you're new to scrapbooking and you haven't seen this before, this is um, just something there's, you'll see some in stores that have uh, red, like it looks red in color. It just has a red backing to it, or you'll see some like this. These are great for 3D projects because they will hold it nice and secure. You can also use like a hot glue or like I mentioned before, a quick drying um, like liquid glue. So I'm going to add some tape to this to prep for closing up my pocket. So I'm gonna do one along the bottom here. I have the scored branding strip on the left and I'll show you why I did that in a minute. So put that on your left and then run a piece of that tape down at the bottom of the first section. And then on the second section, we're gonna run it along this right side. Then after we do that, so let's do that. Don't wanna get ahead of myself in case you're following along or watching this on replay. If you are watching this on replay, say hello. We'd love to say hi to you. Even, even if you're um, watching later, we always come back and look at the comments. So for sure say hi if you're watching on the replay. Okay, and then the last spot that you want to put this tape is along this folded branding strip. So I'm not putting it on the inside of the fold, I'm putting it on the outside as if when after it bends over. And that's so I can close everything up. Now I don't wanna close everything up quite yet because like I mentioned, we're going to sandwich our spine in there, our folded spine. So we also want to prep our spine. And I like to add adhesive to both pieces because like I mentioned, this is something I plan on using a lot and I want it to last a long time. So I'm also going to add this tape adhesive along the front and back edges that are going to be sandwiched inside of my pocket, if that makes sense. So there's the front and then I'll just flip it over this way and I'll add it along the back as well. So let's see who else is watching. Hi, Rebecca. Great to see you. I say 
Oh, I'm going to not say your name right. I'm so sorry. Marieke? I'm so, if I said, I'm sure I said that wrong. I'm terrible at other languages, but that is a beautiful name. And I'm so glad you're here watching from Holland. So hello and welcome. All right. We've got our tape adhesive on the front and back of that spine piece. And now we can get ready to close this up all together. Now, something I like to do, even though our color vibe has this dots on it and it almost acts like a grid to help me line things up, I'm still going to draw a guideline on there because I want this pocket to be nice and straight. So to do that, I have, this is like a grid ruler, like a quilting ruler. I don't sew, so I don't know exactly what it's called, but I think it is available in the, um, the sewing section. This one happens to be 12 inches. I know some of them are really, really long, but I like to use this to draw straight lines on my projects or to line things up. A lot of people use a T-square. I like to use this. So for this, I'm going to be using it to draw a, a line on a guideline on my spine that is one and one eighth inches from the edge. So let me grab a pencil and I'm going to line this up. I like that I can see through this and sorry if my head gets in the way, I'm just trying to line it up. Um, and you can see that it doesn't go right up to this, the, uh, the tape. So sometimes people use the tape as a, an edge to line things up, but you know what? I am never that straight. So I like to draw a line. So I'm gonna draw a little guideline for myself. And I doubt this is gonna show up on camera, but I will try and show you. You can see that I've done it there and I do it in pencil. That way, if any part of it shows, after I put my envelope together, I can just erase it. Okay, so now that we have our spine ready, I'll show you again. We've folded it in half and there's tape on the front and back. This is the folded edge and this is the open edge that I'm going to sandwich inside my pocket. Then I've got my pocket that I've prepared that is 12 and a half inches wide, including the branding strip. And then it's eight and a half inches tall. We've scored it in half at six inches and then along the branding strip. Just, just repeating for anyone who may have joined us late. Now I'm gonna use this branding tab or branding strip as a tab. So I'm gonna just cut or angle cut the two ends just so that it looks like a tab and that it, things just adhere together a little better, just taking off a little bit of the bulk. And now we're ready to start adhering our pocket. So I'm gonna use the side that I have my guideline on and I'm going to remove that um, tape adhesive just on that side, not on the other one, just on this side. Then I'm going to remove the tape from this right edge. I'm going to leave these two on because it's super, super sticky. And so I like to deal with one edge at a time so I don't make a mistake. So here we have that. And now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to line up this right edge, this right sticky edge with that guideline. And I'm going to center it top to bottom. Now remember my spine is a little bit shorter and I did that on purpose so I had a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm just going to eyeball it, but I am gonna line it up against that line and then I'm just gonna adhere those two pieces together, okay? Now the reason I do this side on the front is because sometimes this fold doesn't look super duper pretty when you fold it in here. And so I'm hiding that fold on the back of the page. So that is why I had the straight edge on the right. Now, now that I have that attached, hopefully you're all good. Hello, Joanne from Australia. I'm so glad you're here. I see Joanne from California as well, welcome. And Cherie Clement, hello, hello, Ginger. Okay, so I'm going to erase, or not erase, take off these sticky strips now and I can close up my pocket. So I'm gonna remove all three of them. And the first thing I do is I stick this tab, this branding strip tab down to that sticky part. Then I can just fold over this edge and everything comes together nice and clean and nice and smooth. So now I've got this pocket that I can put my cards in for each month. That's what it looks like on the front. 
Um, I don't see my pencil line, so I don't think I need to do any erasing. I kind of overlapped it slightly, so that was good. And then on the back, here's what that folded edge looks like. You can see that it's a little more bulky, so that is why I put it on the back edge. It really doesn't matter either way, but that's just my brain thinking things through, I guess. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Hi, Terry from California. I'm glad you could join us. Okay, so... Now that we have our spine on there and our pocket, we can punch this. Now, like I mentioned, the binder does not come with any page pockets. So um, I just happen to have one in my stash that I'm going to use as a template. If you don't have one, you could measure the distance between your holes right here and make a template um, on another scrap piece of paper, first of all, you know, to kind of test it out so you don't ruin your one that you just made. So I'm just gonna overlay this page pocket right over the top of my spine and line it up with the edge. I'm gonna center it top to bottom and then I'll use a pencil to mark where those holes are. Now that I have those holes marked, I can punch my holes. So I like to flip my punch over so that I can see through the little window where my paper is and then I can line up those marks and go ahead and make those punches. So the base of our pocket is now ready and I'm gonna take another sip of water cause oh my goodness, my 3 a.m. crafting voice is back again and I apologize. <laughs> if you joined us late, I was telling everyone that I had an idea for a project and I just had to get up and craft at 3 a.m. And so my voice is starting to get tired now that it's almost 3 p.m. But I don't care. I've had a great day. So, <laughs> all right. So let's grab our other pieces that I've already cut out from the paper and we will put this together. So I'll show you again. The paper on the other side had the, the month card on the top, and I'm, I'm sure this doesn't match exactly. And then it had the note card on the bottom, and it looked something like this. It's probably opposite, but you get the idea. And my month is upside down, but you get the idea. So once you cut out these six by eight pieces of paper, you do want to trim them down to, um, you can leave them six inches wide. I'm sorry. Don't leave them six inches wide. You wanna trim it to five and a half inches wide. So leave it eight inches tall, but you wanna trim it to five and a half inches wide. Our pocket, remember, is six inches by eight and a half. So with that five and a half by eight inch tall paper, you're gonna have this nice, beautiful border of cardstock around your piece of paper. So that is the method to that madness, okay? So I like to ink my edges. I don't know if you do, but, um, you know, I kind of think of the, like a shadow effect. So I'm going to use a dark gray ink and just sponge around the edges. You could use a makeup sponge for this. I'm using a dauber. Um, people use other kinds of sponges as well. So if you like the look of that, I like it because it just, it just kind of defines the edges. Sometimes it hides imperfections. And I like to use the gray because it's just a really light color and um, it doesn't add a lot of, uh, you know, really dark edges. It just gives that, gives it, like I mentioned, that shadow effect. Okay, so once we have our edges all inked, we can put our pattern paper onto the pocket and then we can decorate with our uh, two pieces, our month card our list card that will be available for download, and then we'll add a few stickers. Okay, so let's first put one of the six or five and a half by eight pattern papers on the front. Everyone doing good? Hello, Diane. Hello, Terry. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad to see you. Okay, so let's tuck that on there. I love seeing edges of cardstock. It's very satisfying for me. <laughs> Do you like to mat your things too? I just love that look. And I just, I love a mix of patterns, a mix of colors. It just makes my creative heart so happy to see that. So we'll put this other piece on the back. 
Now in my book for now, all of my backs of the pockets are just plain cardstock, but you could put photos on there. You could make another list if you'd like if, to utilize that area. So um, I may do that down the road. Now we're going to put our month here and this one does go edge to edge on the pocket, which I like that look. Um, if you don't, then maybe you wanna make a bigger pocket, but it will stick out of your binder a little bit. So just be aware of that. Now, before I glue this down, I'm actually going to cut out my month pocket. So I need one that says 31. And this is a free download if you're joining us late that I will post on in the description later on um, once we are finished with this video. So watch for it tonight or tomorrow. I was having a bit of trouble with my posting thing earlier today or else I would have put it up earlier, but come back and get it because it's there or, you know, make your own. It's, it's really not too difficult. It's just lines and numbers, but I did put a light gray outline on here. The reason for that is because on my home printer, I have to run cardstock through a back rear feed slot. And sometimes it doesn't grab the paper um, perfectly. And so when you have something like this with a lot of lines, if it's, you know, when you go to put it in your trimmer it, and it's cut crooked, it's really obvious. And so I just use my scissors real quick. And then like I mentioned before, I'll use this gray ink to just hide those um, light gray guidelines that were on there. And you won't even know they were there. Okay, so we're ready to add this list. And again, this list is where you'll put anniversaries or birthdays of the January, and then you'll tuck those cards into the pocket. You can write them out ahead of time so that they're all ready to go, and then you're not scrambling at the last minute. Um, you know, maybe you want to make a custom card for somebody because you know they love chocolate or you know uh, they love motorcycles, whatever it may be. And so you can make a card with them in mind ahead of time when you have extra time, but then you, instead of putting it in your card stash, you've got this binder album to keep them all organized and ready to go. And you can even write them ahead of time if you'd like. So really simple, really easy. And now we're gonna add a few details. Again, this extra card is just gonna get tucked right inside the pocket. You can use that to write favorites, you know, favorite colors, sizes of clothing, um, anything like that, that you may wanna keep track of for all the birthday people that you know. So there is a coordinating card kit for this collection. Look how cute this collection is. So you know what? Let's tuck a few of those in there, right? Why not? And show how those A2 size cards fit in there just perfectly. Okay, so let's go back to our binder and I'm gonna show you the finishing details that I added on each of the pockets so that we can add it on this January one. At the top, I added a couple of layered strips of washi tape. So let me show you the um, patterns that coordinate with this, uh, the, the washi tapes that coordinate with this collection. You get a set of five washi tapes. There's three larger or thicker designs and two skinnier ones. So on this book, I used the floral and the hearts, and then I layered a piece of this cross hatch or this black plaid over it, as you can see right there. And then each page is a little different, just depending on the pattern that I wanted to go with it. So for this one, I'm going to use the floral because I have the tan background. And then again, I need that black plaid to layer with it. Again, I apologize for my voice. It's a little funny today because I was crafting early this morning and I've been up a long time. <laughs> okay, so we'll just put a little bit of washi tape up there. You can see how just a little bit of washi tape can add a lot of detail and interest to a project. And then even more fun is to layer them up, especially when you have these multiple sizes and these multiple patterns. So our packs come all together in a little box like this with all five of them, and they are a lot of fun to use. Okay, so one thing you can do on these month cards is if you have like a circle stamp or something like that and you want to highlight the days that are important to you, you can do that. I chose not to because I'm just going to do it down here, but that would be a really fun idea. So um, maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to stamp some circles or some hearts over things you could do 
you know, balloons for birthdays, maybe like as in a lighter color. So you, you can still see the numbers through the ink. Um, and then, you know, do hearts for anniversaries or something. But I did a, instead I did a little group of stickers. So I've got my cardstock sticker sheet here and I have used most of them. So I kind of put together this last little design that I thought would be cute right here on January. So um, let me add a little foam tape to that. How's everyone doing? Hi, Terry. Oh yes, she's asking at the end of the video, could you review the products? You bet, I'd be happy to do that. And then hi, Diane, it's good to have you here. Let's see, we have Sue. Oh, she's gonna use enamel dots, fun. And then we've got Scrap and Jenny from New Zealand. Awesome, so glad you're here, this is fun. This is fun for me to have friends to craft with this afternoon, so thank you for coming. Okay, so I put all my clusters in the same little spot. And then I think for this one, I might add, um, let's see, I want another little accent. So I think I'm gonna add this little speech bubble just cause I think it's super cute. <laughs> Hearts look great everywhere. So I think that's fun. You could also add, the little hello phrase. Ooh, wait, maybe I'll do that. Let me, I gotta audition both of them. So there's what the hello phrase looks like. And that's what the speech bubble looks like. What's your vote? Anyone wanna tell me? Let's see, first one to comment. I'll do what you say. Speech bubble or hello? What do you think? <laughs> I'm watching, I'm watching. Hello. Okay, Joanne, you win. I'll go with the hello. <laughs> All right. So let me grab some more foam tape to add to the back of that because I like to add a little bit of dimension to my projects. Not too much. It's super thin. Um, you know, just a little bit of dimension because I don't, I want the bulk of my book to be the cards that I'm adding in the pockets, but it is a little fun. Now, we are going to decorate the cover of this and then... I can go ahead and add that pocket into my book. Another really fun thing that we can add to this are some enamel dots. I or not, you know, we have enamel dots, but I also have our decorative brads. These are one of my favorite things I'm reaching for lately because they're not brads, they're stickers. And they've got this gorgeous um, shiny epoxy. You've got the little ones that are solid. You've got some chipboard shapes down here. So a lot of bang for your buck on this pack. So for example, let's just tuck this little heart one right here and look how cute that looks. And I'll come back later and add some more throughout the book. But let's go ahead and decorate our cover. Okay, so yeah, the standard, Terry's asking um, that she doesn't make a lot of cards and that the standard store-bought store size will fit. So a standard store-bought size is an A7 card and that is about five by seven. So you can see that this pocket was six inches wide, so a five inch wide card would fit. And then the pocket is eight and a half inches tall, so a seven inch high card will fit in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the cover. Now what I love about the designer binder is a lot of the work is done for you, right? You've got this gorgeous pattern on the inside with the dots, and then this beautiful wide stripe on the outside. Now we have, I believe, five colors, if I'm remembering correctly, of these stripe binders. We had the black, robin's egg, red, pink, and yellow. Did I remember them all? I hope so. If Amber's watching, if I missed one, pop on. Okay, so let's see. For this, I wanted to do something really easy. So I grabbed one of our chipboard frames. Look how cute that is. Love our frames. They're perfect for journaling, perfect for photos, but you know what? They're great for shakers. And in this instance, I'm going to use it as a base to my design. So where did my adhesive go? Good grief, Jana, where did I put it? <laughs> I'm missing my tape gun, where did I put it? Wow, it's gotta be here somewhere. I'm losing my mind. Oh, here it is. It was hiding under the um, scoring board. Okay, so I'm just gonna take some adhesive and put it on the back of this chipboard. This is awesome chipboard. You know how sometimes you do your tape runner along chipboard 
and it pulls up a layer of the chipboard, this won't do it. <laughs> it's awesome. I hate when that happens. I know it's just the nature of chipboard sometimes, but our chipboard, I don't think it's ever happened to me. So I'm, I love that. Okay, so I'm just going to trim off. This is this color of color vibe cardstock that I'm using for this is the flamingo color, which is so pretty. So I'm going to use that as a base for my title on the front of my album. I've also used some color vibe cardstock to cut out a few hearts. So these are just some heart dies that I had laying on my desk with a recent project. So I thought it might be cute to put a few there. I don't know if I'll add another one up there. I may or may not, but um, let's start there and we'll get this attached to our book. So I'm gonna use some foam tape for that frame. Now you may not wanna decorate the front of your book. If you're gonna slide it in and off of a shelf, you may wanna just keep it that cute black stripe so it's nice and flat or just make sure that the embellishments that you put on the front of your book are flat so that um, they don't, they have a less likely chance to get snagged. And so, um, but I love a fun cover. The covers are fun for me. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate mine. So I'm going to, I think I do want to add dimensions just because they're so cute. Let's see here. And then for my title, you can see sitting off to the left, I'm going to use some of our foam stickers. If you haven't tried our foam stickers, they are super, super fun. They are great for titles. You get two full six by 12 sheets. So you can hog them all for yourself or you can share with a friend, but they have so many cute sayings and they're just so much fun to use when you have your collections. So be sure to give them a try. If you haven't, same with our chipboard frames. They're two of my favorite things, but come on, we're paper people. We love it all, right? <laughs> okay, so let's put these on there. I think I will add some to that as well. And we'll just have this little layered design going on the front of our book. Who else is out there? Oh yes, Terry saying she adores the foam stickers. They're fun, aren't they? So I'm gonna tuck that one, that layered heart behind there. These large ones I actually got in my scrapbook and cards today kit this month, which was fun. They feed, they actually, in January, they featured the good stuff collection in that kit. It was really, really fun. So let's add a couple of these um, enamel or these uh, decorative brads. I think I want another one. Let's see, I love that it's on a clear page so I can kind of audition, you know, does this look good on that color before I peel it off and, and lose the tackiness. You know what, I want one more with that. I want a solid one too. I think that will be cute. Okay, so there's my scattered hearts. I've got this base for my title. And for this, because this is all about life and celebrating the people we love, I'm gonna use this nice big foam sticker that says the good stuff. And I'm just going to put it right in the middle. And then I think I will add in a couple more of these hearts. I'm not sure where. Maybe there. Maybe there. Um, here's a yellow one. I might move those later, but that's super cute. Okay, so there we go. And now to finish it off, I'm going to tie some ribbon around that binder. You don't have to. I like ribbon. Found this bright pink with black stitching in my stash. So I'm just going to tie a quick knot on there. And we're going to call this card organizer good. I'll do a little flip through for you real quick so you can see the pages again. And then, of course, um, was it Terry? She asked for me to um, review, or Sue, it may have been Sue, to review the product. So here's the front. I use the designer binder. We've created our own pockets that hold our cards and envelopes. I can write the name of the uh, birthdays or the anniversaries that are coming up. If I want, I can stamp little circles around the numbers just to remind me, give me a visual reminder. On the back, I can do like photos or maybe I can type out another list that talks about the person, you know, maybe the birthday, January birthdays. I wanted to record their favorite colors or their sizes or things like that. 
But here are all the months. Here's what February looks like. And I'll just flip through this so you can see the entire project if you want to refer to it later. And then I will review the products. So we've used the foam stickers from the Good Stuff collection. I used the entire pack of the collection kit as well as the cardstock stickers for all of these little groups. I am going to come back and add a few decorative brads here and there throughout the book just for a little bit of more color and dimension just because I like to do that. So that's and then I've used the washi tape across the top. Now for each of the pockets, I've used the Color Vibe cardstock. You can see again the washi tape across the top. And I've just popped up this little cluster. And then this list will be available for a download later. So look at all these cute colors. Just so much fun. This is a project that you can use year after year to get yourself organized. And what I love is because it's in a binder, I can move the months, right? I can always have the month that I'm in at the front of the book. And then I'll just rotate it to the back and just keep working on what's coming up soonest. And then when the year, the calendar flips over for the next year, I can use it again. So um, totally different than just putting boxes of cards in your stash. This is where you can actually start planning out specific cards for specific people. So let me flip through the uh, pattern papers again so you can see those. Right, Terry? Is that what you wanted to see? Okay, so here's what the cards look like. And at the beginning of the video, I explained how I cut these apart. So we used the January card, and then we tucked to this card inside of the pocket for note taking. But these remainder uh, six by eight pieces, we used the pattern side. And we actually cut those six by eight pieces down to five and a half by eight so that they would fit on the front of our uh, six by eight and a half pocket. So I'll just keep doing this. I'm going to say hello to you. Well, actually, let me switch this so you can keep seeing the products, but I can also say hi and answer any questions. So if anyone has any questions, pop them in. That's the project. It was so much fun. Like I said, I've been wanting to do this forever because I do have a lot of handmade cards, but I'm terrible about Number one, writing something meaningful at the last second. So this way I can plan ahead and, you know, whether it's a Sunday afternoon or 3 a.m. <laughs> when I get a bee in my bonnet, I can sit down and write some sentimental messages to the people I love, tuck that card in there, and then it's all ready to give to them on either their birthday or their anniversary. So I'm going to glance over at the comments and see if there's anything else I can answer. Oh, Terry, thank you. I'm glad. And Becky, thank you. I'm glad you like this project. Hi, Lynn. I didn't say hi to you yet. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, if you're at, if you're watching this on replay or you're creating this later and you run into a problem, leave a comment or reach out to us on a message and I'm happy to help you. I'm happy to guide you through it. So there is the cardstock sticker sheet that comes in the collection kit. And again, I utilize those for the little clusters inside. So I'm going to play with my hearts a bit more and fussy fuss with this a bit more to make it perfect. You know how we do. Um, sometimes it's hard to get it exactly how we want it on live, live TV or live lives, I guess. <laughs> anyway, as a reminder, we have a scrapbook retreat coming up this September. I will be teaching as well as two of our design team members, Becky Adams and Andrea Lake. We also have on Amber Crowell, who is the owner of Simple Stories, and she's the creative director over all of these beautiful collections. So everything that is made by Simple Stories, Amber's brilliant mind touches and and makes so along with the, you know her de the designers she guides them all through the process and she is always thinking up the most incredible ideas we also have sue kendall who's also an in-house um designer at simple stories and she is amazing and then we have jody sanford of foundations decor to come and do a 3d or home decor project so if you haven't got your ticket they are going fast you can buy those at simplestories.com in fact, I think I have a little screenshot here of our website. 
and you can see where that yellow oval is uh, under that circle is where you can find out more information. There will be six different classes. We will have three crops. Two of them will be themed. Lots of fun games, lots of fun giveaways, of course, and we are going to have a blast. I want to hang out with you, so please, please come. All right, so our next live is going to be next Friday at two o'clock Mountain Standard Time, just like it was today. So um, I hope you'll stop by and craft with me again. It was great having you today. I'm so glad you stopped by and I really appreciate your support. And go buy yourself some good stuff and make this darling card organizer binder. I, then we can all be organized together, right? <laughs> all right. You guys have a great day. We'll see you again soon.